The alien general's voice boomed across the galaxy, his image projected into every corner of known space. His species, the Zandar, had conquered hundreds of worlds, enslaved civilizations, and faced countless enemies. To them, humans were a fledgling race, barely scratching the surface of technological progress. As his harsh words echoed across screens, he delivered his verdict on the human race. Humans, you are cowards! You hide behind your diplomacy and negotiations, clinging to the hope that you can avoid war. You build weapons, but you lack the courage to use them. You are weak! His words were laced with contempt, and his fellow Zanda warriors stood tall behind him, their heavily armored forms casting imposing shadows. They were a brutal species, one that valued strength and dominance above all else, and to them, humanity was a joke, a species that hadn't yet faced true power. He issued the challenge, one that reverberated through the hearts of every human listening. We will face you in battle, to prove once and for all that your kind does not belong among the stars. Send us your best warriors, or prove your cowardice by staying hidden behind your walls. The human response was swift but not what the Zandar expected. Amongst the human leaders, there was no debate on the importance of responding. This was about survival about humanity's reputation in the galactic community. But instead of rallying armies or calling upon entire fleets, they made a different choice, a single, confident choice that sent ripples of disbelief across the galaxy. We will send you one soldier, came the official response. One voice, calm and clear, cutting through the Zandar's bravado. The alien general laughed. The arrogance, he thought. The absolute arrogance of these humans. They believed one soldier could stand against the might of the Zanda warriors. On earth, however, the decision was not a gamble. It was made with conviction. The soldier they were sending was no ordinary fighter. He was trained in ways the aliens could never understand. Human warfare had evolved beyond the brute strength that alien species so often relied upon. This soldier embodied something different, human ingenuity, adaptability, and the sheer, unrelenting will to survive. The chosen soldier didn't boast, didn't prepare with great fanfare. He was methodical, calculated, and above all, quiet. There were no long speeches or declarations of intent. For him, the mission was simple, represent humanity, and win. He understood the stakes. This wasn't just about a single battle. It was about proving what humans were capable of, and he had no intention of failing. The media storm that followed was inevitable. Onlookers and experts debated the wisdom of sending only one soldier. Was this a suicide mission? Could one person possibly make a difference? But amidst the noise, those who knew him, the few who had seen what he was capable of, remained silent, watching the events unfold with a calm certainty. The soldier departed Earth quietly, the weight of humanity's hopes resting on his shoulders. He didn't carry that weight as a burden but as a responsibility, one he was prepared to fulfill. The alien general awaited, expecting nothing more than a brief, one-sided slaughter. For the humans, there was no doubt, this wasn't just about one battle or one warrior. This was about proving to the galaxy that humanity was not to be underestimated. And sometimes, all it took was one person. The arena was a marvel of alien engineering a testament to the Zandar's military prowess. It was vast, enclosed by high walls that shimmered with an impenetrable energy field. Every inch of the battlefield had been designed to highlight their dominance, a hostile landscape where no ordinary being could survive, let alone thrive. The air crackled with tension, and the Zandar warriors stood ready, each one equipped with advanced weaponry and armor that seemed more suited for a war between gods than a battle against a single human. The alien general watched from a raised platform, his cold eyes scanning the arena as his warriors took their positions. He stood tall, confident, smug even. The humans had truly brought only one soldier, and now the general would witness the inevitable. To him, this was nothing but a demonstration of Zandar superiority, a formality before they moved on to claiming Earth as another notch on their belt of conquests. The human soldier entered the arena quietly almost unnoticed at first. In contrast to the Zandar, who wore heavy armor that gleamed under the harsh lights, the human's gear was understated, light, compact, and functional. 
He carried no obvious heavy weaponry, just a few carefully chosen tools attached to his belt. He moved with purpose, his steps measured, his focus absolute. There was no arrogance in his demeanor, no sign of fear. To the untrained eye, he might have seemed vulnerable. But to those who understood, he was lethal. The alien general's sneer deepened. Look at him, he said to his second-in-command. Barely protected, barely armed. This will be over in moments. The warriors around him laughed, their guttural tones echoing through the air. The general raised his hand, signaling the start of the battle. His warriors, well-trained and bloodthirsty, wasted no time. The first of the Zonda launched forward with a speed that belied his size, moving like a blur as his energy blade ignited with a violent hiss. The human soldier didn't flinch. He stood perfectly still, his eyes tracking the alien's movement with an almost unnatural calm. The alien warrior's strike was fast, precise, a move designed to end the battle with a single, devastating blow. But at the last possible second, the human sidestepped, his motion fluid and effortless, as if he had known exactly where the attack would land. The alien stumbled, his momentum carrying him forward, momentarily off balance. In that split second, the human struck, quick, efficient, and without hesitation. A simple, well-placed blow to a weak point in the alien's armor sent the warrior crashing to the ground. There was silence. The others on the warriors blinked in confusion, their arrogant certainty faltering for just a moment. The general narrowed his eyes, the smile fading from his face. It was a fluke, he muttered though there was a hint of doubt creeping into his voice. He waved his hand again, this time sending two more of his warriors into the fray. The human soldier didn't wait. He moved first, a blur of calculated motion. Every step was deliberate, every movement precise. The two aliens attacked in perfect synchronization, their blades cutting through the air with deadly speed, but the human was faster, anticipating their strikes, weaving between their attacks with an uncanny ease. He used their size and aggression against them, turning their strength into their weakness. One by one, they fell, their bodies crumpling to the ground as the human neutralized them without breaking a sweat. Now the arena buzzed with an unfamiliar energy, unease. The Zanla warriors, once so sure of their superiority, began to shift nervously. This was not the easy victory they had expected. Their enemy was not playing by their rules. The human soldier wasn't just surviving, he was winning. And he was doing it with a kind of effortless skill that none of them had anticipated. The alien general clenched his jaw, his earlier bravado crumbling as he watched more of his warriors fall. What is this? He hissed under his breath. He could see it now. The human wasn't just reacting to their attacks. He was predicting them, staying three steps ahead of every move they made. It was as if the human had already mapped out the entire battle in his mind before it had even begun. Send in the elites? The general barked, his voice laced with frustration. His most trusted warriors stepped forward, their armor thicker, their weapons more devastating. These were the ones who had never lost a battle, the ones who crushed civilizations underfoot without a second thought. If anyone could end this charade, it would be them. But as the elites closed in on the human soldier, it became clear that they, too, were outmatched. The human didn't fight with brute strength or sheer power. He fought with precision, with the kind of tactical awareness that could only come from a lifetime of discipline and training. He used the environment to his advantage forcing the aliens into positions where their numbers meant nothing. With each passing minute, it became more apparent that the battle wasn't just about combat, it was about intelligence, strategy, and the ability to adapt under pressure. One by one, the elites fell, their massive forms hitting the ground with finality. And still, the human soldier stood, unscathed, breathing steadily as if the battle had barely tested him. From his platform, the alien general's confidence finally cracked. This was not the victory he had promised. This was something else, something he hadn't planned for. And for the first time, he realized that perhaps, just perhaps, he had underestimated these humans after all. The first of the Zandar elite hit the ground, his armor cracked open in the precise spot where the human had struck. The rest of the elite stared for a moment, 
processing what had just happened. This was no longer a simple fight. The human soldier was playing a different game, one that they were struggling to understand. They moved again, attacking as a unit. But the human had already analyzed their patterns, their movements. He didn't engage directly, not like they expected. Instead, he baited them, drawing them in, making them overcommit. A feint here, a quick movement there, and the Zonda found themselves clashing into one another, their bulky forms unable to recover quickly enough. The human didn't need to overpower them. He simply let them exhaust themselves. In a blur of movement, he struck again, disabling another elite with surgical precision. The aliens were powerful, yes, but they were too reliant on brute strength and advanced technology. They weren't used to fighting someone who exploited their weaknesses so effortlessly. The general watched from above, his fists clenched tight. He had never seen anything like this. His warriors, the best his species had to offer, were being dismantled piece by piece by a single human. Every advantage they had, their size, their strength, their numbers, meant nothing. The human wasn't just skilled. He was beyond what any of them had prepared for. The next few minutes were a blur. The elites fought with everything they had, unleashing energy blasts and slashing with their weapons, but it was futile. The human soldier moved with a grace and efficiency that seemed almost impossible. He stayed one step ahead at every turn, predicting their every move. It was as if he had already fought this battle in his mind, playing out every possible scenario before the first strike was even thrown. Another elite fell. And another. The Zandar, who had once been so sure of their victory, now hesitated. They were afraid. Fear, something they had never felt before, not in all their conquests. And it was a single human who had instilled it in them. The soldier moved in close to the last of the elites, avoiding the wild swing of an energy blade, and landed a precise blow to the alien's throat. The massive figure crumbled, collapsing in a heap of armor and muscle. Silence fell over the arena, broken only by the sound of the Zandar elite's labored breathing. The battle was over for them. But the human soldier wasn't done. He stood there, calm and unshaken, as if he hadn't just defeated the best warriors the Zandar had to offer. His gaze shifted to the alien general, who stared back, his confidence all but shattered. The general gritted his teeth, his voice shaking with disbelief. How? How can this be? You are nothing. One soldier, against an army. It's impossible. The human soldier didn't respond. He didn't need to. The answer was already clear in the carnage around him. This wasn't just about strength or technology. It was about adaptability, intelligence, and understanding your enemy. The Zalmar had relied on the same tactics for centuries, dominating species that couldn't match their raw power. But humanity? Humanity had evolved differently. They had learned to fight smarter, to use whatever advantage they could find, no matter how small. The general's frustration boiled over. Enough! he roared. He signaled the remaining warriors, those who had not yet entered the fight. They hesitated, fear creeping into their eyes as they looked at the human who had dismantled their comrades with terrifying ease. The human soldier waited, unflinching. The battle wasn't over. Not yet. The remaining Zana rushed forward, driven more by desperation than strategy. They hoped that sheer numbers would overwhelm the human, but that hope quickly crumbled. The soldier moved through them like a shadow, every strike precise, every move calculated. He was efficient, never wasting energy, never overextending. He didn't need to. One by one they fell. The Zandar, so certain of their victory, had been broken. Their warriors, the pride of their military, lay defeated, scattered across the arena and the human soldier remained untouched, unbothered by the chaos he had caused. The general's hands trembled. This was not how it was supposed to go. The Zandar had always won. They had always crushed their enemies with sheer force. But now, their greatest warriors were lying in defeat, and the human stood victorious. For the first time in his long career, the alien general felt true fear. He had underestimated humanity. He had assumed they were weak because they didn't fight like the Zandar. 
he had thought their reliance on diplomacy and strategy made them cowards. But now he realized, humanity's strength lay not in their weapons, but in their ability to adapt, to think, to survive. The general's voice, once filled with arrogance, now trembled with uncertainty. This is impossible, he muttered. You should have fallen. You should have been crushed. The human soldier remained silent, his eyes locked on the general. He didn't need to say anything. His actions had spoken louder than any words ever could. The general staggered back, his mind racing. He had to do something, anything, to turn the tide. But deep down, he knew it was too late. His warriors had been broken, his confidence shattered. He had underestimated humanity, and now he was paying the price. This was no longer about winning. It was about survival. And the general wasn't sure if he, or any of the Zandar, would survive what was coming next. The general stood frozen, his mind scrambling for any possible solution. His once unshakable certainty was now a hollow memory. This human, this single soldier, had dismantled his entire belief system. The Zandar had ruled through fear, through brute strength. It was all they had ever known. And now, everything they stood for had been broken by a single, quiet warrior. The human soldier, calm and still, gave the general no room to recover. His silence was not passive, it was deliberate. There was no gloating, no arrogant declaration of victory. The general realized then that the human wasn't there for glory or recognition. This soldier was there to do one thing, win. Panic crept into the general's veins, cold and sharp. He couldn't afford to show it, not in front of his remaining soldiers, not in front of the galaxy watching. But the weight of defeat was bearing down on him, heavier with each passing second. He had never imagined this outcome, not in his wildest calculations. The Zamar had crushed entire civilizations, species far more advanced, far more numerous than the humans. And yet, they had never faced this. They had never faced someone like this human. The general's mind raced, searching for something, anything, to regain control. Enough of this charade, he barked, though his voice cracked with uncertainty. You think you've won? One soldier won't change anything. We will return, and when we do, we will bring the full might of our empire. But even as the words left his mouth, they felt empty. The others on their soldiers shifted uncomfortably, sensing the growing weakness in their leader's tone. The general was grasping at straws, hoping to salvage some shred of authority. He wanted to believe that he still held power over the situation, that his threats would be enough to turn the tide. But deep down, he knew it wasn't true. The human soldier's eyes never wavered, his focus unbroken. The general could feel the weight of that gaze, steady, unyielding. There was no fear in the human, no hesitation. That was the most unsettling part. The general had seen countless warriors in battle, had seen their fear, their desperation to survive. But this human didn't fear death, didn't fear defeat. He fought with purpose, not for his own survival, but for something far greater. The general took a step back, his breathing uneven. The battlefield, once his arena of dominance, now felt like a prison. The silence stretched on the weight of the human soldier's presence pressing down on him like an unseen force. The general had been outmaneuvered, not just physically, but mentally. The human had stripped him of his power without saying a single word. The general's last hope was to rely on the intimidation tactics that had worked for so long. He straightened, forcing what little confidence he had left into his posture. You may have defeated my warriors, he said, his voice steadier now but this changes nothing. Our empire is vast. We will return, and we will raise your planet to the ground. The threat hung in the air, but it lacked the impact the general had intended. Even he could hear the emptiness in his own words. The human soldier didn't respond, didn't acknowledge the general's attempt to reclaim control. He simply stood there, unshaken, as if the threat was meaningless. And perhaps it was. The general knew the truth. Even if the Zanda returned in greater numbers, even if they unleashed the full force of their empire, it wouldn't matter. This battle had proven something far more important than military might. 
It had proven that humanity wasn't afraid. They weren't cowards, as the Zaunar had believed. They were something far more dangerous. They were adaptable. The general swallowed hard, his throat dry. He had underestimated humanity in the worst possible way. They had always assumed the humans were weak, that their reliance on diplomacy and negotiation was a sign of fear. But now he understood. The humans didn't avoid war because they were afraid. They avoided it because they didn't need it. They fought only when it mattered, only when there was no other choice. And when they did fight, they fought to win. The general took another step back, his resolve crumbling entirely. His threats, his bravado, it was all meaningless now. The human had exposed the Zandar for what they truly were, creatures who relied too much on power, too much on the fear they instilled in others. They had never faced an enemy like this, one who wasn't swayed by intimidation, one who didn't crumble in the face of overwhelming odds. The human soldier's victory wasn't just physical. It was psychological. The Zalnar had lost their greatest weapon, the ability to instill fear. And without that, they were nothing more than a species of warriors who had never learned how to truly fight. The general's voice, once so commanding, was now barely a whisper. What are you? he asked, the question slipping out before he could stop it. He wasn't expecting an answer, but he couldn't help himself. He had to know. The human soldier didn't respond. He simply stood there, silent and steady, as if the answer was too obvious to need stating. But the general understood. He understood now that humanity wasn't just another race to be conquered. They were something far more dangerous. They were a force of nature, a species that thrived in adversity. And most of all, they were unpredictable. In that moment, the general realized the truth. This wasn't just a battle for the arena. This was a turning point for the Zandar Empire. Their time as the undisputed rulers of the galaxy was over. They had been shown that brute strength wasn't enough. Not against humanity. Not anymore. The human soldier turned and walked away, leaving the general standing alone in the center of the arena. His warriors were defeated, his pride shattered. And as the human disappeared from view, the general felt the crushing weight of what had just occurred. For the first time in his life, the Zandar general knew what it felt like to be powerless. And it terrified him.